just a perfect day. I'll tell you what makes a good Christmas show. Feed animals in the zoo. <laughs> and then later, a movie too. And then home. Stocking snow on the credits and copping off with someone you shouldn't. For the perfect Christmas show, join Mrs Merton tomorrow at 10.15 on BBC One. Oh, what a perfect day. More muscle than Madonna. More charm than Casanova. More power than Pavarotti. It's not like he's saving the world or anything. He's a sales rep. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jamie Lee Curtis in the network premiere, True Lies. Trust me, this time you can count on me. Here we go. This is not a drill. Fear is not an option. Tonight at 10.15 on BBC One. Gotta work. I'm looking forward to it. Now on BBC One, ever wondered what the stars were doing before they became household names? Just ask Angus Deaton. Before they were famous, the very phrase hangs heavy with echoes of hopes fulfilled but lives dashed. How many young minds that might otherwise have been engaged in a life of honest, benevolent industry have been hijacked by this sham modern-day religion we've labelled fame? Indeed, who really wants fame? Who would start upon this road of fool's gold, knowing that it'll lead to money without happiness, reputation without worth, a life of leisure, indulgence and excess, but at a cost of loneliness, spiritual bankruptcy and even insanity? Who amongst us would wish to be famous if they knew the true price? Yeah! Fair enough. to Before They Were Famous, a programme which attempts to scrape away the gold leaf of celebrity and get a glimpse of the Baco foil underneath. <laughs> and you look at much of the archive footage coming your way this evening was hoped by its perpetrators to have been as deeply buried as nuclear waste or William Hague's charisma. <laughs> but uh, no such luck, I'm afraid. Tonight, as the carpenters so prophetically put it, it's yesterday once more. Yes, images dredged up from a phase in stars' careers when the only time they were asked the question, do you have a film out at the moment, was by the bloke behind the counter at their local blockbusters. <laughs> So far, so good, but inevitably, with showbiz kids, we sooner or later have to witness this sort of outrage. <laughs> The chair behind may look pointless, but the idea was that should Melandra tire of being so perky and need to sit down, it was plugged in and ready to go. <laughs> yes, even, 
<laughs> Even the mightiest of show business giants had to start somewhere. Uh, for instance, a mere 12 months ago, the Teletubbies were something growing out of a sheep's back in Wales. And they were to start, to be believed, just 18 inches along from Elton John's hair. <laughs> so, uh, so we're gathered tonight to celebrate the fact that while all fame may be fleeting, it's obscurity that lives forever. Hello. I'm going to demonstrate how PG Tips Big Bags gets the tea you can really taste out into the pot. As you can see, there's so much room in the tea bag that the tea leaves can circulate like bad, letting out their really good tea taste. In a smaller bag, it'd obviously be more restricted. On the other hand, it would be able to see more clearly. PG Tips Big Bags make it easier to get more flavour in the pot. Which means more flavour in the cup. <laughs> While researching tonight's show, we called David Jason to ask him exactly what it was we saw swimming before his eyes in that ad, and he quite properly told us it was the chances of his ever working again. <laughs> but uh, as any young actor will tell you, if a casting director inquires, have you ever played a giant tea bag before, you immediately invent six years you spent at RADA specialising in the human portrayal of hot beverages. <laughs> Beside that, you maintain that you can uh, dance, yodel, conjure, strip, juggle, and weep out of either eye on command. And it's generally then that they say, and, of course, you can sing. I'm waking and longing <laughs> Yes, it's a singing John Wayne, although, unless my ears deceive me, he's apparently been dubbed by a singing John Major. <laughs> The poor actress there, clearly wondering if the job as a giant tea bag is still going. <laughs> Well, she certainly steals the acting honours with this line. That was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> now, this one is slightly trickier to place. Spread all over town. Well, the fresh-faced guitarist on the prowl is none other than Derek Thompson, Casualty's own Charlie. <laughs> It's uh, from a little known, and you can see why, British film called Gonks Go Beat. Uh, I would tell you the plot, but having watched it through twice now, I'm not entirely sure there is one. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, now that was much better, wasn't it? In fact, it was wonderful. <laughs> That's a boothroid there. <laughs> in an uh, early manifestation. Of course, uh, today, thanks to the rise of boy bands, having a voice like a walnut in a waste disposal is no longer considered a handicap. However, at least all the wannabe warblers in that bunch were sent to stage. In showbiz terms, they'd already arrived, even if in real terms there was no one around when they got there. And the moral being, if you do happen to belly flop with your first chance at the big splash, don't fret. Those who dwell in the showbiz deep end rarely get it right first time. Never have I seen her so pale. Don't look at her. God! No! Oh. Ah! Oh. Me? <laughs> no! Okay. It won't work again. Won't work again. It works. Hey, it works. Let's see how long it'll stay there. <laughs> now, you've got a new series coming up, I know, called Secrets Out, which is right. about unusual hobby. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not what's my own, it's what's my hobby. Oh, your name's anything interesting, Mr. McKinney. No, oh, I. Lord Moorcroft wants to make a Prince for his memorial statue. <laughs> <laughs> now, the same way as last time. I was lifting a lump of Portland onto the carving stand that went. Uh, just leaving your hands on the desk. Right. Oh, I'd like you to meet. Gerald Francis, who I believe you were judging, Gerald, uh, yesterday. <laughs> How old are you? Uh, twelve. What is the... Whose is that bird? Uh, it comes from Czechoslovakia. And, uh, I don't know the name of the person whose business it is, but... Wouldn't be Marshall Tito's, would it, by any chance? Yes, I think it is. I think it is. Yeah. Thank you very much, Gerald. <laughs> All of us are performers at heart, you know? It's something that you get to kind of doing it for. Like, I've been dancing ever since I was a little girl and, and dancing at Fremont High School and now dancing for the 49ers is... It's just something that's in you, you know? And, and you can't get that feeling anywhere else. And I am a real 49er fan and I love football.
Slade as skinheads, an idea they, uh, <laughs> they began, but in the case of their guitarist Dave Hill, one that nature finished. <laughs> Still, they had exposure of a sort. How much worse it must have been to suffer your apprenticeship on the sidelines as a member of that long-suffering breed, the Extra. These days, extras are called non-speaking artists, which is a bit like referring to this desk as a non-singing piece of furniture. <laughs> treasure all your lives. First and off I is Penelope Keith, seen well, here marrying a man who shows us what William Hague might look like if he tried to visit a sex club in disguise. Good luck. Well, I got it. On it the is. Jack Benny show, a former Mr Bond the premieres as an Italian taxi Please driver. Please, will you follow me to the taxi, signor? Say, who's this fellow, Victoria? <laughs> he is the most famous opera singer in all Italy. Usually, when you arrive in Rome, oh, such a commotion. <laughs> uh, his character obviously hailing from one of those charming Italian villages just outside Kilmarnock. Well, what happened? In this uh, unforgivable piece of naval nonsense, Michael Caine is overhearing the fact that the nuclear submarine he's on is about to blow up. One chance in a million, but then it always is. Interestingly, rather than react by running around screaming, good God, the nuclear submarine I'm on is about to blow up, he in fact appears to have nodded off. <laughs> He's even able to keep a blank face during one of the most appalling script cliches of recent years. I'm afraid she's going to blow. Speaking of which, this is Joan Collins. As a teenager, in fact, uh, which should place the clip around 1905. <laughs> Uh, it's from an information film made by the coal board, and indeed, Joan does look as if she's attempted to stamp out a small fire. <laughs> but uh, note also some furious work by the bloke operating the table lamp, which is only <laughs> stopped when the small boy has a bit of bother with his build-your-own-cellarfield kit. <laughs> and from the same era comes fictional music sensation Ronnie Baker. Passing over uh, Beryl Reed, playing the planet's only pension-drawing Bobby Soxer, <laughs> uh, we note that news of Ronnie's engagement... I'm getting married. ...causes balloons to burst, hearts to break, and Glenda Jackson MP to fall over. <laughs> and so to Chariots of Fire. And if you thought Glenda was miscast as a groupie, how about Ruby Wax as an Edwardian socialite? <laughs> Not required to say anything here in her first job, but boy, has she made up for that since. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the real world of sport, a real piece of history. For one of the giggling apprentices running behind Kevin Keegan here is none other than one Alan Shearer. <laughs> Alan is participating in Kevin's farewell party, an emotional ritual that Kevin likes to go through about once every ten days. <laughs> So, a bunch of humble yet honest beginnings, although none of these soon-to-be millionaires featured there would have to live with the shame that our next bunch of young hopefuls are saddled with. It's a trap that, uh, to my cost, I know only too well. The quick thrill and easy money to be earned as a teenage dolly girl. <laughs>